What is the quickest path to becoming a high value man? In this video, we're going to be breaking down Roland Tomasi's eight steps to becoming a high value man. We're going to see where these are legit, and if not, what are the actual steps that you should be following to becoming a man of value? So this was sent to me by several viewers and when I saw this and you I had to react to it because number one, there's a lot of lulls to be had here. You're gonna see this as the video goes on. But more importantly, I think there's a lot of good half truths here that I can expand on and provide a lot of clarification on what it actually means to be a high value man, which is something I think a lot of people in the manosphere are really confused about. So this was by our good old friend, Rolo Tomasi, and it says the quickest path to becoming a high value man, do not get married, avoid family creation, vasectomy in your 20s, live consistently, eliminate all sedations, learn game and networking, play to your strengths, build wealth resist easing up on your focus. So first I want to point out the irony of the fact that he's literally three for eight when it comes to all these things. He did get married. Uh, he does have a family. He, I think he did not get a second in his 20s because I think he had his kid a little bit later on in life. Uh, it doesn't look like he lifts consistently. Let's just be charitable and say he eliminated all sedations. He definitely doesn't know any game as witness whenever he's around girls. He's super awkward. Uh, play to your strengths. Let's just give him that one. And let's be charitable and say he resisted easing up on his focus. That would still make him three for eight. So it's always funny when people give advice they're not actually willing to do themselves. But that's not the point of this video, right? I think I want to take these things that he says at face value and explore them and see whether these are actually things that will make you a high value man. So let's start off with the first one, do not get married. I think there's a small element of a truth here. What you don't want to do is get into a shitty marriage with a woman who drags you down. Right? But that's how it should be worded. But the idea that you should not get married because that will increase your value as a man is pure nonsense. Some of the most successful CEOs, world leaders, presidents, politicians, like anyone you know who's a man of value are people who are married and have kids. So this idea that like somehow being a bachelor gives you value over someone who's married is pure nonsense. How are you gonna tell someone who's in a happy marriage with a wife who loves him, who has kids and grandkids, that he's not a high value man? Like again, what are we even talking about here? And just also ironic because Rolo didn't follow this one either. Either, right? So clearly he doesn't really believe that reflected on his own actions. Number two, avoid family creation. I think the same thing about this as I do for the previous one. There's a half truth. You don't want to have a bunch of kids out of wedlock, you know, that are unplanned, right? So you don't want to just randomly get some random chick at the club pregnant, right? That probably wouldn't be good, especially if you have to give up your career in order to do that. However, if you're planning on starting a family, right, with a woman that you love, right, and you raise your kids well, how would that make you a lower value man? Again, some of the top CEOs, some of the most successful people are fathers and grandfathers. They have kids, right? Because they want someone they can pass on their legacy to. So again, how are you gonna tell a father who's surrounded by a loving family that he's lower value because he had kids, right? Again, this makes no sense at all. Uh, number three, vasectomy in your 20s. I don't understand how a mild medical procedure is going to increase your value as a man. I think the point here is that you should be wearing condoms when you're having sex with girls. So yeah, don't raw dog random girls at the club, right? That's really what should, this should be, is don't get a random chick pregnant. You don't need to get a vasectomy to do that. Vasectomies were designed for men who were married, who already had a bunch of kids, who are not interested in having more kids with their wife. That's what vasectomies are designed for. They're not designed for random guys in their 20s as a form of birth control, right? That's kind of a silly way to go about things. Unless you just absolutely cannot stand condoms and you know yourself and that you will never wear a condom, which is silly in of itself. So again, getting a vasectomy doesn't make you higher value, doesn't make you lower value. It's a medical procedure. It has absolutely no effect on your value as a man. Number four, lift consistently. This is the first one I 100% agree with. Even though Rolo doesn't really do this one himself, this is good advice. Lifting offers a whole host of benefits. Mentally, it develops fortitude, develops discipline, and it's good for your overall health. And also, women are going to be more attracted to you. Men are going to respect you more. You know, when you see a jack guy, right, you're way less likely to mess with him, and you're more likely to subconsciously treat him with respect. Now, I think this should be broad, and it's not just lifting. You want to lift correctly. You want to eat correctly, right? You want to sleep correctly, right? But the general premise here is correct. So this one, I give my full stamp of approval. Number five, eliminate all sedations. There's a half truth here. You don't want to be constantly sedating yourself. You don't want to be constantly getting drunk or getting high because then you're not going to be able to accomplish anything. However, sedations and moderation are okay. There's nothing wrong with having a glass or two of whiskey with your friends on the weekend. There's nothing wrong with smoking weed once in a while with your girlfriend. And there's nothing wrong with going into the woods with your friends once or twice a year and taking some shrooms. In fact, sedations can be a very good way of resetting your brain when you're in a rut. For me personally, sometimes I'll be working, working, working for days and I just hit this rut. I can't think, right? And all I have to do is basically sedate myself a little bit, right? And then I reset and next day I'm a lot more productive, right? So sedations and moderation are totally okay. You just want to avoid excessive sedation. Number six, learn game and networking. Also, 100% agree. And these are very synergistic because if you learn game, that's going to help your networking. You really cannot be 
at the pinnacle of success if you don't know game and networking, or at the very least, you don't have social skills, because no career is in isolation, right? At some point, you're gonna have to charm somebody, whether that's your boss or you know a client. At some point, you're gonna have to negotiate. At some point, you're gonna be able to pick up on social cues and body language to figure out what the other person wants, right? You're gonna need to know these things, right? So I think learning game is very important when it comes to your career, and let's not forget for attracting women, because you don't wanna be the ultra rich guy, right, who has a lot of money, but just gets taken by some 20 20 year old gold digger, right? Because she's able to basically out social you, right? So it's very important to, you know, have solid social skills. It's gonna help you with your career and it's gonna help you also in other areas of your life. Number seven, play to your strengths, build wealth. So I do agree with the play to your strengths part. I think that is very important, right? You don't wanna focus on everything. So for me, for example, what I'm really bad at is finance and accounting. What I'm really good at is creative stuff. I'm really good at overall strategy. So those are the things I focus on and I outsource the things that I'm bad on, right? And I'm also really bad at tech stuff. So if I was trying to figure out the tech stuff myself, right, I wouldn't get anything else done. So you do wanna focus on your strengths, right? And outsource your weaknesses. Building wealth, I think is also important, but not for the reason you might think. Uh, building wealth is important, not because it buys you things, but because it gives you freedom, right? Imagine that you have $10 million in the bank. Well, you can do whatever you want. You can take a job, not take a job. If your boss gives you shit, you can quit. You can travel, not travel. You can start a family, not start a family. Now, let's imagine you have no money in your bank account. You can't do any of that. You're basically dependent on your boss. You're dependent on the situation, right? You'll have a lot less freedom in your life. So I do think it's important to build wealth. You don't have to become a billionaire, but just having you know several million dollars in your bank account will give you all the freedom that you need. And number eight, re resist easing up on your focus. So when I read this, I think of don't become complacent, which I actually think is really, really good advice. Typically what you see is someone achieves some point of success, they become complacent and things slowly start going downhill. You're never stationary. You're either going up or down in life, right? And you wanna be always going up, right? Take a look at someone like Elon Musk. He has accomplished so much, right? He has become a billionaire, right? He has you know so many companies that he's running. Does it look like he's getting complacent just chilling out no he's still working 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 and that's why he keeps going up and up and up but the minute that he becomes complacent then things are going to go like this so you want to avoid having that happen to you you always want to stay focused right stay on your mission and keep on your purpose right because again if you become complacent things are only going to go downhill for you and you don't want that to happen so overall i thought the first half of this list was pretty much entirely nonsense but the second half was actually really solid advice that i would give to other people myself but the real question is what would i replace the bad piece of advice with and believe it or not there's actually quite a few things which i think are essential to being a high value man that i do not see on here these are things i rarely ever see discussed in the manosphere period so let's go over these the first one is developing a network of other successful people that are going to push you in the right direction and help you accomplish your goals right people who you can trust and rely on and this is crucial this cannot be understated because you cannot build an empire by yourself even playing with fire which is a relatively small company of five or six people would not be where it is right now if it wasn't for other people now let's take a fortune 500 company you think you're going to run that by yourself without other people you can depend on and rely on absolutely not and you have to be able to screen for the right kind of people in your life. You can't let bad influences in your life. This is not a skill you're born with. This is a skill you have to develop. You wanna be able to let in people in your life who are trustworthy, who are honest, who have integrity, who have shared values, and avoid the people who are just gonna take, take, take without contributing anything in return. The second part of this, you have to be able to develop friendships and relationships with people that are based on trust, integrity, and shared values, right? And again, that's not a skill you're born with, right? We're tempted to take shortcuts, you know, it's like, oh, whatever, I'll tell that little white lie or oh whatever i won't help my friend in this situation blah blah or he did this blah 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 right but these shortcuts are not going to serve you as you get older in life and become more serious of becoming successful so nowadays i'm very careful about who i let into my life right and how far they get into my life because again i want to be surrounded by people who are positive, who are motivated, and who are gonna help push me, and people who are gonna have my back. And of course, I will have their back when times get tough, and when times are good, there can be people who are gonna push me in the right direction, help me become even more successful. Number two is taking care of your health. Rolo kind of touched on this when he said go to the gym. There's a lot more to your health than just going to the gym. There's also diet, there's also sleep, there's also, you know, doing regular blood work. There's hormones. You know, there's avoiding uh, like toxins and stuff like that, right? There's a lot more to it than that. And typically, successful people will spend a good amount of their money, you know, five, 10, 20 percent 
on their health. Me personally, I probably spend at least 10 to 20% of my income on health related things. I have an infrared sauna, right, which costs $5,000. I have a red laser, laser machine. I've done stem cells. You know, I've done a lot of vitamin IVs and stuff like that because again, if you don't have your health, you don't have anything else, right? You can have all the money in the world, but if you have diabetes and you're sick, you're not gonna be able to appreciate that money. Take it from someone who was bedridden at one point in their life, and I've seen what it's like to have a lot of other things without having health. So it's very important to be proactive when it comes to this. You don't wanna wait until the point where you get sick. And number three, which I think is also crucial, is being able to push past your fears and develop discipline. These are not skills that we're just born with. Typically, everyone has a good amount of fears and paranoias and things that make them anxious, right? And most people, what they do is just, they avoid things that make them anxious, they avoid their fears. But what you wanna do if you wanna be a high value man is to be able to push past these fears, is to stretch your comfort zone. This is why I like pickup so much, because in pickup, you're forced to basically confront your fears and stretch your comfort zone. This is very important and it is essential for becoming successful. Also, you wanna develop your discipline because again, that's not something you're born with, but you're not gonna be able to be successful, you're not gonna be able to be a high value man, right, if you're not disciplined and you don't develop that skill. But anyway, if you guys follow these three things as well as the other things which I agreed on with Rolo, then you're gonna be right on the path to becoming one of these legendary high value men. All right, hope you guys found this video valuable in the last, but most important step to becoming a high value man is smashing the like button, hitting subscribe, clicking that bell for notification and sharing this video with a few friends because it really helps in the algorithm. Also, if you guys enjoying this type of content, let us know in the comments what you want to see more of and I appreciate you guys watching. Until next time.